So once you've made your geometry, just click on or double click on mesh and this will bring up ANSYS meshing for us. So when you have ANSYS meshing open, what we need to do is we need to determine which computational domain here is talking to which one. Because we've got three material regions, that means we've got three domains. So what I'm going to do first of all is center my case. I just want to be able to see the end of this tube here and the geometry that's within. So first of all, I'm just going to click this end face and make sure it is the end face and not another face. Press F8 and that will hide it. So now what I'm looking at is the inside of the tube. You can tell that because I can see all the way through to the end. So what I'm going to do is open connections and contacts and actually delete all the default ones there. Because these have been automatically generated. Sometimes when they're automatically assigned, they're not assigned to the correct faces. Not always the case, but I'm trying to demonstrate good practice here. So what we've got is an inner fluid region touching a metal. So what I'm going to do here is select this wall of the inner fluid region. And I'm going to make it contact or pass information to the inner region of the pipe. So selecting contacts, insert, and then manual contact region. So selecting contact first of all, it will be this one, which as you can see in the top right is the outer region of the fluid. So just clicking apply there. Select that face now, press F8 and that will make it disappear. So now we can no longer see any surfaces from the inner fluid region. So the next one I'm going to see is going to be the inside of the pipe. So selecting that, Selecting target and then selecting that. You can see in the bottom right hand corner that that's now the inner surface of the pipe. Selecting apply, we have fluid inner and pipe. So that's where we want information to be passed to between. So now I no longer want to see the inside of the pipe. So I can select that face and press F8. So what I'm now looking at is the outer region of the pipe. So right clicking on contacts, insert manual connection so I can still see that surface of the pipe which has come up here, perfect. So making sure I select it, press F8 to hide it. Now this should be the inner region of the outer fluid as you can see in the bottom right hand corner here. Hitting apply, pipe and fluid outer, so they're now properly connected. And that's all we need to do for contacts. So when you're happy that case has been set up correctly, just click generate mesh at the top. And what you'll do is create a very, very default crude mesh. We're not looking for particular accuracy in this case. All we're looking for is just to make sure that the information is passed from the inner to the outer fluid domain. So once you've got something, just shut meshing down. Right click on mesh if it asks you to an update. And then when you're ready, open up setup, which is going to be CFX Pre. So when you open up CFX Pre, what you're going to see is our default domain and then another domain and some interfaces. So what's happened here is the software has incorrectly recognised those three different fluid regions or three material regions as being under one domain heading, which is not true at all. What we've got is three different domains. So what I'm going to do is specify each domain individually. So I'm going to start off by creating a new domain and call it fluid inner. And I'm going to select where that is. So if you select this top region here, 
and click apply. If you're not certain that's selected the right place for you, just have a zoom in and you should be able to see that that's the inner mesh here. So that will be that inner fluid region. We know that it's a fluid domain and we're just going to call it water as our material. And that's one of the default options here, so that's quite nice. Easy to select. We know it's continuous fluid and we're not going to consider any buoyancy. If you're going to fluid models at the top, we are going to consider thermal energy. And I am just going to change that fluid region to shear stress transport. I'm going to leave all of the controls as default for the moment. Next thing I want to do is create a domain for the metal region. So I'm going to call this pipe and that location is going to be our middle option here and again if you're not sure just zoom in and you can see that it's this region here. So we've got a lot of arrows here because of the incorrectly specified interface. They'll disappear in a minute when I delete them. So in pipe this is going to be set as a solid domain and that is going to be copper let's have a look at solid models we do want to consider thermal energy not so interested in thermal radiation so we can close that down and finally i'm just going to delete this domain and i'm going to create a final domain which is going to be fluid after Again, specify this as the bottom region and again if you're not sure just check and this is definitely our fluid outer. It's not a solid domain, it's a fluid domain and I'm just going to call it water as well. Selecting water from the default material options and selecting thermal energy and again using the shear stress transport model. So once you're happy you've done all that, just click apply. And now what we need to do is make sure these domains are talking to one another correctly. I'm just going to delete this interface option and set up my own. So first of all, what we've got is the fluid inner to the pipe. So the first interface is going to be fluid inner to the pipe. So rather than being a fluid fluid, that's going to be fluid solid. So the fluid inner is that one there. And we know which region that is. And it's going to be talking to the pipe. We need to be sure here that we're selecting the correct wall. So just scrolling through the options here, that's the end face, that's the far end face, and this is the wall. So we want this option to be selected. In terms of the pipe, again, we have end face, end face, inner and outer. So in this instance, I want the inner region of the pipe to be selected. Okay, it's going to be a general connection and everything else is set. So that's one. The next region that's going to talk to each other. It's going to be the pipe to fluid outer. So this again is going to be a fluid solid. And it's going to be the pipe talking. And it's going to be the outer surface of the pipe. So it's not that end surface. It's not the far end surface. It's not the inner but it is the outer, so it's this fourth option here. And rather than being fluid inner, it's going to be fluid outer. And let's just make sure we've got the right region specified. So it looks like this one. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. So it's going to be this one here. It's going to be general connection. There's no movement, but there will be heat transfer. Just clicking apply. 
double click on analysis type we know that it's going to be a steady state simulation in terms of solver control I'll just pop this up to a thousand but we probably won't ever get there and I'm going to leave the RMS residuals at the moment as 10 to the minus 4 so that's all the setup you need so when you're ready just click save and then open up CFX solver manager so once we've set up all our connections what we need to do is specify boundary conditions so the first thing I'm going to do is specify boundaries for fluid inner region and like I said before X is going to be our default direction of fluid motion so just viewing the negative X or the lowest X value end and right clicking on fluid inner insert boundary and I'm going to call this one inlet and just selecting that location by clicking in this box making sure select is on and clicking the end there making sure it's the only thing visible or highlighted and selecting 0.5 meters per second with a static temperature of 372 once you've done that hit OK now what we need to do is specify an outlet behavior or an opening condition so looking at the opposite end and hitting boundary So looking at the opposite end, right click, insert boundary, I'm going to call it outlet, select the location like we did last time as being this region here and specifying it as zero pressure, hitting OK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to specify fluid going through the outer region and what we need to remember is we're setting up a counter flow case we need to make sure the largest x value is going to be our fluid in region so right click insert boundary inlet for this one fluid outer so we know it's going to be in that condition I'm just going to click here and select this wall. So not this wall, but this one here. And we're going to select this as 0.2 meters per second. We're going to say it's got a static temperature of 278 degrees Kelvin just clicking OK and then the final boundary condition we're interested in specifying is the outflow condition here so fluid outer region right click insert boundary fluid outer outlet setting it as an outlet condition making sure we've got this outlet region here specified and it's going to have a relative static pressure zero. Okay. Now that's set up, just save, open up Solver Manager, and run the case.